Hey Yagaho, Cooper here with a free agency update for GBA Season 4. Uh, if you're not familiar with how free agency works, uh, basically it goes as it goes in reverse order of standings for, you know, who gets to pick in what order. Um, you have to maintain your roster integrity, that is to say you have to keep one of each tier and you have to stay under the point cap. And uh, other than that, you can only just do one free agent ad drop, so you gotta make it count. Uh, the guy I picked up, I honestly did not expect to get him because I felt like he's one of the better UUs that did not get taken, and there are quite a few people who have worse records than me, so they can be able to pick before me, um, who would be able to, you know, because of their excess points, be able to drop RUs or NUs uh, for that good UU. Uh, but apparently, there were only four other people who put in claims this week, so I ended up getting him, so cool. Uh, this is probably the most controversial uh, free agent drop of this initial period because I believe everyone else had dropped a poke that they had not yet brought in the first three weeks, and the poke we dropped was actually our kill leader so far, going 5-1 and one in the first three weeks, which is Lucario. Um, obviously with that, uh, we lose out on stab fighting. We have, you know, it's available through various tiers, but uh, Lucario is our only source of it on this team. Um, so we no longer have stab fighting option uh, unless we get a trade going on. But at the same time, we have Blissey, and only one other team has Chansey, which is the Rampardos, who we only play once, maybe twice in the playoffs. So I think we can probably work around that, and I don't necessarily know how good Luke would be at... Eh, he might have been all right taking down that wall court, but... Anyway, uh, we also lose, of course, uh, Lucario's nice priority. Extreme Speed got most of his kills. Um, you know, he also had Bullet Punch and Vacuum Wave hanging out there. Uh, the guy we're bringing in does have some priority. It's not quite as good, but it, it is at least there. And uh, I guess we also kind of lose an Ice Resist. Not that Lucario is exactly the thing I want to be resisting Ice with, but, um, you know, as a defensive typing, you know, it, it had a little bit more synergy. Uh, but anyway... Uh, so yeah, so we dropped Lucario. Uh, the other ad drops for this week, we had the Regirakis dropping Meloetta, picking up Kobalion, the Rampardos dropping Kling Kling for Vileplume, the Aqua Jets, who we just faced, dropping Gardevoir for Umbreon. Thank goodness they didn't get to use that against me because I hate Umbreon. Uh, and the Pyratata is dropping Rotom for Aromatisse. So I, I kind of feel like... Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not with Gardevoir. But I feel like with several of those, you can kind of get the the idea that, at least because they hadn't brought them yet, that they were kind of dropping dead weight and trying to pick up something that they might want to use. And the difference with, with this free agent drop was that, yes, this was something I was using and having success with, but I think I, this is a thing I want more. Now, obviously, I would have loved to have you know kept Lucario and dropped something like, I don't know, Venomoth, but again, you have to keep one of each tier, so I'm forced to keep Venomoth even though I don't really want it because it's my only BL. So I just want to reiterate that this is not a regret pick or a draft mistake or anything like that. I still think Lucario fits fine on the team. Uh, you know, at the time I picked it, I think it was still a fine pickup for me, something I'm you know comfortable using, etc. Uh, the only reason we're making this change now is because of information uh, that could only have been obtained after the draft, that being who's in my division and what their complete roster is. You can't really, you know, draft based on that uh, during the middle of the draft. So, that being said, uh, the guy we're adding is Nidoking, and I'm going to give you guys five reasons why we're adding Nidoking, because I suspect this will probably be the most talked about free agent pickup, and therefore probably one of the more talked about things uh, coming between re week three and four. So, first off, if you look at my roster, before adding Nidoking, I have no electric immunities, no ground types, no volt absorbs, none of that stuff. And that's pretty good to have. I don't think you necessarily need to have it. You know, I'm well aware that fast electric types are, uh, you know, very good in the format. And, you know, I'm, I'm sure I was going to have to face one, you know, eventually one or two. But admittedly, I was not expecting to end up in a division with arguably the two best ones, that being Raikou and Jolteon. So if you have no ground type on your team, then they're pretty much just free to slap on a choice item and know that nothing is going to stop them from volt switching. Um, if you don't even have the potential to bring a ground type, then they're not going to be impeded at all from doing that. Um, I don't necessarily have to bring a ground type. As long as I got one on the roster, it might at least you know deter that from uh, being a thing. Um, the other th big thing with this is that I wanted a ground type, and I also would like 
have liked a ground type that did not have a 4x weakness. You know, there's other things like, say, Flygon or Swampert that are out there. You know, those are okay. They would have done some of the things, but they had a 4x weakness, and that just makes it too easy for those fast electric types to just throw on HP Ice or throw on HP Grass, and I did not want that. So Nidoking King doesn't have 4x weakness, so cool. Uh, second big thing, this is almost bigger than the first thing really, is hazard options. If you recall, when I drafted Lucario, he was there kind of as the Infernape replacement, uh, but he was missing out on several of the utilities that I wanted on Ape, most notably Stealth Rock. Um, as it is, we only had Blissey and Aggron on the team as pokes that could use Stealth Rock, and you know, I love both those guys, but I don't really want to waste a move slot on Aggron on Stealth Rock. I'd rather be, you know, kicking people's butts. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be handcuffed to having to bring Blissey every week. I don't mind bringing Blissey every week, but I'd like to not have to, and of course I'd like to set up Stealth Rock every week. So Nidoking really opens up, you know, another offensive Stealth Rocker, just opens up team building, uh, being able to have rocks and not have Blissey. It also carries Toxic Spikes, which we already had with Venomoth, but that was Venomoth, so... I would have liked to have dropped Venomoth for No King, but uh, Venomoth's my only BL, so unfortunately it kind of has to stay unless someone wants to trade for it. So, yeah, so we get some extra hazard options. That's really good. It's also another thing to soak up Toxic Spikes if I don't want to waste the turn rapid spinning. Uh, third thing, um, you know, it's replacing Lucario, and I think overall it's not a downgrade in terms of offensive presence. Uh, as far as the speed goes, I feel like the speed drop from 90 to 85 is pretty negligible. Uh, we already faced Excadrill, who's in that range. Heracross wasn't drafted. He's base 85, so he would speed tie one and uh, get outsped by the other. And uh, Then there, I guess there's the Rotoms, but I feel like I wouldn't necessarily be that comfortable taking on the Rotoms with either one of them anyway. Uh, not to mention they you know, can typically run a, you know, a slower, more defensive build, so there's kind of that as well. Um, you know, they have, both of them you know, can hit on either side. Um, ironically, they tend to prefer to hit with the stat that is lower um, for both of them. Uh, Lucario has the higher special attack, but the higher base power moves are on the physical side, like close combat. Uh, whereas Nettle King has the higher attack, but his uh, higher base power moves tend to be on the special side. Uh, especially the ones that work with Sheer Force. So, or factoring in Sheer Force anyway. So, you know, they kind of both can hit on both sides, um, and yeah, um, now obviously Nidoking King doesn't really have much in the way of setup moves, whereas Lucario did, but uh, that kind of leads into the fourth point, which is that we already have a good setup sweeper with Mega Charizard X. When I picked Lucario, that was in the third round, you know, I, I already decided I'm going to wait and take my Mega last round, so you know, go ahead and take a setup sweeper then, ends up that we get one of the best setup sweepers just because Dragon Dance is so freaking good. Uh, in the form of Zard X, and you know, I, like last week against Hank, I was doing a bunch of calcs with you know, trying to set up sweep Lucario, and it was just it was kind of underwhelming. Um, I guess maybe I was comparing it too hard to Zard X, but uh, I just wasn't that overwhelmed. Like this plus two extreme speed isn't killing everything, rawr. So for whatever reason, I just didn't really value Luke's setup potential much after that. And, uh, you know, just Charizard's also immune to burn, so we don't have to worry about, like, Prankster, Will-O-Wisp, or, you know, things like that coming in. So, uh, you know, for that reason, I felt like, well, if I'm only going to be really using him as a, you know, kind of faster than a lot of things, and, you know, just come in and deal massive damage. Um, I felt like, especially with the other utilities in the, in the electric community, um, I kind of hate that it adds another ice weakness, but, you know, ice is a good offensive type, what can I say? Um... Yeah, I just felt like that was overall better. And uh, I guess last reason, and uh, we'll close out the video with this one, uh, we're going to show one move. Uh, it's another rock-type move that I felt like we were lacking in just a little bit. We have a little bit of it on the team, but uh, it's not nearly as much as it was uh, in Season 3 where we had you know a, a lot better of an offensive core with this move. So uh, I'll just let you guys uh, uh, zoom in on it here, and see you guys next week versus John. Later days.